Morning everyone, it's Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42. It's going to be one of those mornings. I'm sitting here trying to record my video and I've already said F words a couple of times, so starting over because I really try to avoid using those in my videos. It's an everyday word for me, but in my videos I, I do try to keep it PG. Anyway, it is... Monday, September 23rd, 2019, video number 84. Um, home invasions have already started. It is the beginning of fall and the spiders are trying to move in. You know how I feel about them. I don't like them. They are creepy crawlies and they drive me crazy. Last night, Mark killed a big one in the bathroom. This morning, I vacuumed up two more. Mm. don't like spiders <sighs> any of you understand or don't already know that I don't like the spiders <laughs> home invasions have started how you doing this morning my last video uh, was my two year floss tube anniversary and I'm doing it, did a giveaway for that, and I had 77 people um, reply, comment on who they watched and how long they've been watching, and it was really kind of fun. It's always fun to read the comments, but it was kind of fun this time because a lot of people said Carolyn Mazio, who I don't think I've ever watched. So I need to go check her out. Somebody said she doesn't make videos anymore. I'm not sure. Or there was another name that was similar to that. Um, there were a lot of people who, like me, said that Vana was their first person that they watched. And there was also a lot of people who said that Stitcherista, Danielle, was somebody that they started watching. And... I also watched Danielle. In fact, she has inspired a couple of different finishes of mine over the past couple of years. And one of the finishes that I'm going to show you today is also an inspiration from Danielle. So, last night was date night. Mark and I went out to see Downton Abbey. I'm not going to give anybody any spoilers, but if you're a Downton Abbey fan, go see the movie. It was really, really good. If you didn't watch the series, go see the movie anyway, because by itself, it was really, really good. So on the way home, I asked my husband to be my random number generator because that's the way I roll. And he told me, I said, I need two separate numbers between one and 77. He gave me number three and number 62. Number 62 is Rinda Cornick and number three is Colleen of Stitching with the Sisterlies. So ladies, I will comment on your original comments with my email address. I'm also going to have my email address in the box down below. Please contact me because I need your mailing address so that I can get the bags and some goodies sent off to you. I also need to tell you how to claim your gift certificates from Acorns and Threads. Thank you to everybody who commented on my video. Uh, thank you for the wishes, the well wishes for having done this two years. Thank you for liking, subscribing, whether it's your first time or you've been with me on this journey that I've been on for two years now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. I have three FFOs, I have a new start, I have purchases, and I have some gifts. And I want to start off with the gifts first. Um, Saturday the 14th, I got to meet somebody who is a member of the Facebook group, The Stitcher's Coven. Her name is Kay LeBlanc Richard. She lives in Maine. 
and her son lives here in Oregon and she was coming out to visit him and asked me if I could meet up with her at Acorns and Threads. So we plan to do that on the 14th and I went there after work. Um, that's where I got part of my purchases. I showed pictures on Instagram. I bought 100 and 140 DMC colors for my new start. I'll get into that. But I was over in the corner, in the DMC corner, and I had my little basket and I was filling it up with all the colors. And I came around the corner and Kay and her friend had just walked in and she looked at me and she goes, Audrey? There was hugging, there was laughter, there was some conversation, not nearly enough. Um, but then she handed me something that she said she had made for me. Do you see this beautiful bracelet? This is gorgeous. I have worn this every single day, Kay, since you gave this to me. It's my colors, it's beautiful. I, I, I stare at it trying to figure out how you did it. <laughs> she also has a business card in there and I will list this information down below. But her business card is Kay Sarah, Sarah Jewelry, and she has an email jewelry at yahoo.com Okay, so the camera's not going to focus. Anything new? No. It was a pleasure to meet her. She said that she may come back again to visit her son, son sometime when we have and try to time it when we have our first Thursday meetup. So that would be fantastic because maybe I'd get a chance to spend more time talking with you. Okay, other, other gifts. Michelle, who is Maine Moose Mom, she contacted, she sent me a message through Instagram and asked me if I had seen a pattern and when she showed it to me, it was like, oh my God, <laughs> I love this. It showed up yesterday. First of all, I have to show you this card she sent because this is the cutest card ever. An owl, a frog, and a butterfly doing a selfie. They look pretty pleased with themselves, right? The pattern she sent me is Kur i Badakur, Halloween and Cross Stitch. Look at that. There's a witch boot, witch boot pin cushion. I have a witch boot pin cushion. There's a witch and she's stitching. And there's one of them. Okay. I love Kur i Badakur patterns. Ever since I did Halloween and Quilt, and I enjoyed stitching that one so much. I want to stitch this today, but I have my new start and I think this is going to wait just a little bit. But oh my God, this is gorgeous. Halloween and cross stitch. And it says every witch loves Halloween and cross stitch. Why yes, yes I do. Thank you so much, Michelle. And then the other gift that I got came from Catherine Murphy. She adopted some unfinished Santas for me almost two years ago. I think it was shortly after I started doing videos that I decided I just wasn't going to finish these Santas and She's commented on my videos many times and she sent me a message saying that she would be sending something my way. Look at this beautiful card. Perfect. So perfect. On the envelope, please excuse the cat hair if there was any included. 
cat hair is fine. Dog hair, maybe not so much, no. <laughs> when I stitch, I shed all the time. And there have been many, many times where I'm going along and all of a sudden I realize that I've stitched a stray hair of mine into my project. So if there's cat hair, there's cat hair. But anyway, she said that uh, a friend gave her her old stitching stuff with a handful of different flosses. And so she sent me the 796, my favorite blue. I mean, that is such a gorgeous blue. And I have a plan for these. I have been thinking about doing something. This is also the color that I've been using on the It's You I Like pillows that I've been stitching. And I still have more of those to stitch. But I have a project. And I'm going to use these. So, Catherine, thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Okay. So, my purchase. My friend, Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher, she not only does cross stitch, she also quilts and does sewing, and she makes some beautiful project bags. And I've decided I'm not stitching any more project bags myself because I don't like the way they look. And I don't want to even deal with zippers. So with all the plethora of people that are out in floss tube world who make video or not who make videos who make project bags i can get all my project bags from other people and i can help support them and have their wonderful beautiful stitching in my home i currently have three projects that i'm working on i don't need the 20 project bags that i have upstairs doesn't stop me from buying them because I see a new pretty and I go, oh, I gotta have that one. That's what happened with this. Look at this. Look at this. She showed this on Instagram and I couldn't say me please fast enough. It's blue. It has spider webs, but I don't see any spiders and that's okay. It has ghosts. But then you look at the background and I'm going to turn that over to you. Do you see her? Oh my God. This is, <sighs> I couldn't say me please fast enough. Just, just absolutely beautiful. So yeah, I buy the project bags. I don't necessarily need them, but I, apparently have a thing for them and that's okay it's all right i'm good with having a thing for somebody else's stitching yes okay i have some ffos to show you the first one is a pattern from the first two actually are from Just Cross Stitch 2019 Halloween. This one is Spooky Stitching. So, in the magazine, it says that it's supposed to be stitched with three colors. Uh, black, pumpkin orange, and then a lighter pumpkin orange. I decided to use my Victorian motto for the hand and where all the black would be. The spider web is supposed to be the dark, darker pumpkin orange with a little bit of the lighter pumpkin orange in the middle. When I started stitching the dark orange on here, I didn't like it. So I picked it all out and I tried stitching the spider web with the lighter orange and I didn't like it. So I picked it all out again and I went upstairs and year and a half ago I had found a package at Goodwill of 
It had 30 variegated flosses in it. And I later found out that you can actually buy this package at Michael's for the same price I spent at Goodwill for it, and that's fine. And I've used those variegated flosses a couple of different times now, and they really are pretty variegated flosses. I used uh, the green one and the red one for Halloween ornament, ornaments two years ago. And then I used the black and gray one as the smoke on Plum Street Sampler's scary one. I used it for the smoke. And you know me, when it comes to variegated floss, I play with it to get the effect that I want with it. Well, I use that same black, gray, cream color variegated floss. And I did the spider web and the threads down here and the threads here. I changed the words from Witchy Stitch to Stitchy Witch 42. And I really, really like the way this turned out. I had been thinking about taking this up to JoLynn and having her finish it for me, but I kept looking in the magazine and I liked the way it looked in the hoop. So in that box, the thrift box that I got earlier this year, I went up there and I had a hoop that was the perfect size. I just painted it black and I have a finish. And yes, I left the spider out of the spider web. That's where I put my initials. It may be a thing now, but that's my first FFO. My second one, well, I posted this on Instagram and this is uh, Witch Soup, also from Just Cross Stitch 2019. This is the one where Victorina from the Something School of Magical Stitches fell into the soup and now she haunts the cauldron. This is my finish on this one. This is a laser cut balsa frame. You can get them at Michael's, they're like two bucks. I used a similar balsa frame when I finished um, Wicked Plant. No. Audrey from um, Little Shop of Horrors. I really, really like the way this turned out. This is fabric that I had dyed myself. I did have to adjust the pattern a little bit because the bats up here on the original pattern come out further. In order to make it fit into the frame, I just kind of condensed them up over her. And Vicki, Stitch and Buttons, sent me this fantastic needle minder that is a tombstone, says RIP. And she personalized it with 2019 and Victorina underneath it. So when I put this all together, I just glued that to the front of it because it makes a perfect, perfect finish. There, if I put it over against the blue wall, you can see more of the, the frame. Like I said, these are really cheap at, at Michael's. I think the small one is $2 and the larger ones are $3. I think the openings are a similar size though. So it's just the size of the outer portion of the frame that changes. That is my second FFO. Now, my third FFO. This is the one that was inspired by Danielle Stitcherista. When I started watching her, um, she did a tutorial on using painter's canvases as the backdrop for finished pieces. And I was really intrigued by that idea. I've done it a couple of times now. Um, Witchy Woman Apothecary was the first one that I used the painter's canvas. And I did a tutorial, sort of, on how I finished that one. I put material, fabric, on my painter's canvas and I glued it down and gave it kind of a decoupage, mod podge finish. And then I put my stitching on top of that. I also used a painter's canvas when I finished Waxing Moon Witch on Duty. And that one, I took some dyed cheesecloth and draped it around to, to make it look like it had 
rotting fabric hanging in front of it, like it'd been hanging outside for a while. I like the idea of using the painter's canvases because you can do so many different things with them and you can really add and embellish a stitched piece. This finish, the one I'm about to show you, I absolutely love. I had stitched Barbara Anna's A Wicked Plant on Murky. And I love Murky. I love the colors in it. It's just gorgeous fabric and it is good for so many, many different things. So originally my idea was to paint the canvas to mimic the fabric, to mimic Murky. So I had black and gray and a tan colored paint and I painted my canvas and it looked like crap. It looked like crap. So I did what I do when I paint something and I don't like it. I painted it over completely with the black so that I'm starting over now with a new base color, just the black. But I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. So I actually set that canvas in front of the cauldron on my table here, my pillow cauldron. And I let it sit there for two days with my stitch piece, which I had fought, put finished as a flat mount. I had that sitting in front of it. And this is where I sit and I play on my computer and mornings before I go to work. Anyway, I'm sitting here and I was looking at the finished Wicked Plant sitting in front of that black canvas and thinking to myself that I actually kind of liked it just there on the black canvas and that would have been okay and then one morning looking at it I thought hmm I am going to mimic the border from a wicked plant on the canvas so I went and got those three colors of paint that I had well I grabbed three colors of paint I used a white a gray a light gray a dark gray and the tan that I had originally used on the canvas and I grabbed my husband's drafting ruler and I laid it across the top of the canvas and I was just using it as a way to kind of make a straight line but also to space the design. So this is my finish on Barbara Anna's A Wicked Plant and the border up here on Barbara Anna's A Wicked Plant is kind of what I tried to mimic. I didn't do it exact, didn't want to do it exact. I wanted to mimic it. I wanted it to be simple and just add a little oomph. I took this design here and painted the top half right there. I took this little bat and I painted him over here, but I painted him in gray because obviously with a black background, if I would have paint, painted black, you wouldn't see it. This little leaf over here, I just made a little leaf right there. So there's a close-up of it. When I showed this to Mark, Mark has always you know, been impressed by what I do with my stitching and how I finish it and everything. When I showed him this one, he said he loved it. So that meant a lot to me because it's simple, it's effective, it just adds a little bit to it and I absolutely love the way this piece turned out. So those are my three FFOs. Um, I have three projects that I am working on. I forgot to bring two of them in here. Uh, one of them is Quaker Gone Haunted by Michelle Ink. It's the one I started on my birthday. I honestly haven't worked on that piece for over a month. It's sitting in a project bag in the living room. The other piece that I am working on is the Tiny Modernist Phoenix Biscornu. 
I have three of the Phoenix stitched and I'm working on the fourth one and then I can start doing the design for the back of the Biscornu. And when I go to finish it into a Biscornu this time, I'm actually going to take it with me up to Acorns and Threads and have Jolyn sit down and show me what to do so that I can stitch it right because this will be the second Biscornu that I've made and the first one, yeah, wasn't by any means perfect. And the only other thing that I have been working on, um, I did a little video the other day to show you how I start my full coverage pieces and I have started my next Alphonse Mucha. It is Evening Star and I'm gonna turn the camera just a little bit so that I can hold this up. This is where I am at with her. Um, this, I started her last Wednesday, the 18th, and this is what I've gotten done so far. And like I said in that video, I start in the top center and I move to that side, came back, came over to this side. So I have my full width of stitching in here and then I work back and forth one color after the other from one side to the other and back and forth and I'm starting to get a little bit of the border there. So I figure that she's probably going to take me about a year. Um, the first Alphonse Mocha I did for my daughter took 13 months. The second one that I did Hmm, can I move my camera? If you look up, you can see her against the green wall there. Yeah. <laughs> Tripods. You can move them around. Sorry for that. Um, that was Evening Reverie. She took 11 months for me to finish. The Moon, which was the last one that I finished, the one that I finished earlier in this year, I worked on that one for two years and honestly the reason she took so long was because once I got past her face and her shoulders and her arms she became a very very dark palette and if you're working on a full cover piece you know that you're working up close and it's pixelated and you don't see the design and she was such a dark palette that it became really hard to work on her until I decided to tag along with Michelle Rudy's idea of Stitch 9. I did a Finish 1 challenge and I got her done. And then I didn't know what to do with her, so I gave her away. And I'm really glad I did because from the moment that idea came into my mind, it felt right when I passed her on to her new owner um, and I saw how much joy she gave her. Um, yeah, I, I gave the moon away and she's going to a new home and I get to visit her once in a while and I'm really, really happy that she is going to be at this new home. And now I'm working on the one <laughs> that I wanted and I know right where she's going to go in the house. So yeah, that is my stitching for this week. Um, Renda and Colleen from Stitching with the Sisterlies. By the way, if you haven't gone and watched Stitching with the Sisterlies, you should. Uh, two sisters. They're here in Oregon. I haven't met them in person yet, but they know acorns and threads So I'm hoping that will happen someday. So Colleen and Renda, please look At your original comments. I will leave my email address with you I'll also leave my email address in the drop box down below Contact me. I need your addresses and I have a question to ask you so that we can figure out the password you're going to need to collect the gift certificates from Acorns and Threads. 
that is all from me this week. Um, I have places to go, things to do, and laundry. I have laundry. It's Monday. <sighs> yeah, laundry. Never ends. Ever. Live long and stitch on, my friends. Bye-bye.